We don't date anymore, and I don't know what happened to her. A bunch of years ago, I started dating this girl. She was absolutely beautiful, and I was head over heels infatuated with her. Let's refer to her as Sally. Things with her weren't entirely perfect, as most relationships aren't. But one thing that stuck out was that she lived in a basement suite of this kind of creepy house on the edge of a less than nice part of town. The property was surrounded by a tall chain link fence, and the yard had all the grass dug out and replaced with stone filler. It was whatever, right? She liked it fine, so it didn't really matter to me. She told me the people upstairs were rarely seen, and she would leave the rent in their mailbox, so she hardly ever interacted with them. But she did mention that sometimes, at night, she would hear strange sounds coming from upstairs, like dragging or scraping across the floor at random times in the night. Bothersome, mostly. Again, if it wasn't a big deal to her, it shouldn't have been to me either, especially at the start of our relationship. After a few dates, she asked me if I'd like to come over to her place for the night. Stay over? I was absolutely excited at this next step. Arriving at her place was surprisingly normal. The basement suite was completely redone and honestly looked great. All new appliances, new bathroom utilities, beautifully new painted walls. It really caught me off guard compared to the house's exterior. It was a deep basement though, probably close to 20 steps down. Because it was so deep, there were only two windows, one directly above the bed and one in her living room, which was really only around the size of a cubicle. The windows were small too, I would be hard-pressed to fit through one in an emergency, so the only realistic entry or exit was the door at the top of the long staircase. Later, after a successful night of romantic escapades, we lay in her bed holding each other. Staring into each other's eyes, I could see she was getting tired. I mustered the strength to pry myself out of bed and turn off all the lights, preparing to sleep myself. As I got back to her bedroom, I went to close the door and turn out the light, but as I did, she objected. Oh, I usually just leave my door open while I sleep, actually. For whatever reason, this really unnerved me. I've always just kept my door closed at night. But I wanted the evening to keep going smoothly, so I just agreed and considered it was something we could talk about in the future, if necessary. Maybe it didn't matter after all. I turned out the final light and got into bed with Sally. We rearranged ourselves into a comfortable sleeping arrangement. I could still see her face, and she was drifting off to sleep quickly. How lucky am I? I thought. Soon, I drifted off too. What seemed like only seconds later, I was ripped from my sleep by an absolutely terrifying scream. My eyes burst open and I was in panic mode. What the hell was going on? Directly beside me was Sally, sitting up fully in the bed. In a panicked voice, she screamed, There's something in the house! I immediately switched from panic mode to I've gotta protect us mode. I jumped out of bed and ran out of the bedroom, unsure of who I was going to find. I looked around in the darkness, and after a few tense moments, I peeked back into Sally's bedroom. She was lying down again, completely asleep. Unbelievable. She must have been having some kind of night terror. What a crazy thing to happen the very first night I sleep here. Realizing what happened, I crept back to bed. Sally being asleep, I figured there was no harm in closing the bedroom door. I shut it which somehow made the room even darker. She didn't even seem to register that anything at all had happened. I wondered if she even knew this was something that she did. Laying in bed, I stared at her and enviously watched her sleep, unaware of what had just happened, and soon I drifted off again. <coughs> my heart suddenly jumped out of my chest when sometime later I was again woken by a scream. Sally, fully sitting up in bed, screeched out even more alarmed. There's something on the floor! I was just so sleep stupid I didn't even have time to think. Once again I jumped out of bed and started exploring defensively. After a few short moments, the previous incident came back to me and I begun to understand. I looked back and sure enough, Sally just laid back down and continued her slumber. What should I do? Should I wake her up? I thought. I really liked this girl and I just wanted to get through the first night perfectly. So whatever, I let her sleep through her second night terror. This time I was really on edge. I laid back down trying to calm myself and hopefully get some more sleep. I was becoming more aware of the room and every sound snapped my attention to it. 
Just outside her bedroom window, I heard feet crunching through the stones in the yard. I laid there, telling myself not to worry. You've had enough false alarms tonight. Suddenly, I heard slow, drawn-out creaks ripple through the floor above us. This must be what Sally was talking about when she said there was strange sounds upstairs. It didn't last long before the creaking stopped right above where we were laying. Then, slow scraping began to emanate from the same spot, like someone was trying to dig towards us through the wooden floor. What an odd sound. I just wanted to put this whole experience out of my mind. I rolled onto my side, facing Sally. Just remember what you're here for. I looked at her beautiful, sleeping face and felt the anxiety melting away once more. I stayed on my side, focusing on her. My eyes blinked heavy, and I could feel the tired thankfully returning. I shut my eyes to welcome sleep's embrace one more time. But before I could drift off, I heard a deep, growling, unnatural voice that did not belong to Sally coming from behind me say, There's something behind you. I didn't sleep, and I didn't turn around. Thank you for being here, by the way. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified because I'm doing these every week, new stories every single week. Subscribe now.